All right, I'm back. Um, I thought I was having allergic to dust because yesterday I, I slept in a, this is gonna sound ridiculous, um, not last night, but the night before, I slept in a closet. Basically, we moved to one final Airbnb before I left a day earlier than everyone else. Uh, I left yesterday, most people left today, uh, and then we were kind of doing a walkthrough of this very cool Airbnb, and then there was a mattress in a closet. It was a sizable closet. And I was like, hey, I haven't had a door the entire time. I've been traveling. I will take this closet with a mattress that has a door. And then I woke up the next morning with like all this sinus crazy pressure and I just kind of assumed that it was like an allergic reaction to the dust, which it could still be. Maybe it is just effervescing. That is not what that means. It's percolating, becoming something more. But yes, long and short of it, now I think I'm sick. But it's kind of ridiculous to me because Art and Alina, were sick like the entire time and I managed to completely avoid getting sick for two weeks and then the last day that I'm there I felt fine when I went to sleep and then I woke up feeling like crap so I'm still hoping that it is more dust than anything else but either way I'm very congested I'm it's not I'm not I'm not in a good I'm not happy I'm dealing with jet lag so I just feel like garbage from that anyway because it's a three hour time difference between Utah and here and I should have this video is now a day late because it should have been up on Wednesday this is probably going up on Thursday because I'm recording it at 5 p.m. and that's where I am right now but and the first story actually has to do with Sundance Film Festival which was incredible I have one screener to watch here and then I will have hit 50 movies um, from Sundance Film Festival which is Pretty cool if you ask me. My, my When people are like, well, why didn't you upload videos while you're away? And it's because I watched 50 movies while I was away. My entire days in life were basically marred with a bare minimum of four movies, but more often than not, five to six movies. And when I wasn't in the movies, I was in line for the next movie. So yeah. So we are gonna be talking about the new Ted Bundy biopic, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and vile. And that they were extremely wicked, shockingly evil, vile, and the product of a design to inflict a high degree of pain and utter indifference. And the drama surrounding it, and if you guys don't know what that is, that is the new biopic coming out uh, involving Ted Bundy. Now there's been a lot of drama surrounding this, and the only people that I'm going to take seriously are the people who are just like, we shouldn't make movies about serial killers or anybody in general. It should fall under the same line of when we're talking about um, like school shooters and mass shooters. You know, if they've already been caught uh, and dealt with, stop saying their names, stop giving them the, the infamy <clears throat> that they want. And I'm conflicted because I agree with that, but I, like many others, am someone who find these types of people like very, very interesting. You know, I, I love reading um, FBI, you know, crime reports on stuff like this. I, I love reading uh, John Douglas books and he he's one of the uh, f like original people in the FBI's behavioral science unit. Um, the show Mindhunter is actually largely based off of his book Mindhunter in which they would go around and interview different people like this in prison. So I find it fascinating even though their, their crimes are just absolutely heinous and disgusting. I do kind of think it's important to at least talk about warning signs and things that, that trigger this kind of behavior and uh, and like what to kind of kind of look out for. But obviously the argument here is that, you know, Ted Bundy has been dead for ages. He was arrested ages ago and it's kind of a closed chapter. So what's the point of making this now? But there are a lot of other people who have the argument that <clears throat> the whole thing based on a trailer, they're basing their assumptions off a trailer, which we all know trailers are largely bullshit. Trailers exist to, to try to amp up something to its greatest potential and make people super into it. But based on trailer alone, they think that the whole movie exists to glorify Ted Bundy as some kind of like superstar rock star. And uh, that's both by people who haven't seen the movie. Now I, as someone who has seen the movie, that's right, I'm important. I saw the movie. I didn't just see the movie. I saw the movie for free. Bo free and going into Sundance it was actually one of my most anticipated films it's currently still in my top 10 but I don't actually think it belongs there like the more I'm looking at the things I saw but there's just moments in it that are really good so that's kind of why it's up there but it's not in my top five it's I think it's like it's in like ninth place it's in ninth place right now and honestly it could probably be put lower if I'm being really honest but as someone who's seen it 
I'm going to give my opinion on the situation. Now, what a lot of people are failing to realize is that this movie is made by the same people who made the Netflix documentary, which obviously clearly goes over the fact that, you know, he was a, a criminal. So a lot of people think that the movie is just trying to glorify his behavior, but it is largely based upon a book that was written by uh, Liz Klepfer, who was Ted Bundy's long-term girlfriend, and at one point they were even engaged. So he was around for a lot of not only her life, but her child's life, as well. Not not biological father, but he was around a lot, which is, you know, what people are taking issue with. There's like, one of the pictures is him wearing a, we're wearing a, uh, like a birthday hat, and they're like kind of all like a nice little family around the cake, but you gotta realize that, that that's reality. You see it in so many of these different killers that, you know, before they get caught, they do a really good job, you know, maintaining a double life. Like, Bundy was rapidly declining in his behavior, uh, even before he got caught, which is things that we found out after the fact when he was kind of talking about returning to where he would like, um, where he would leave the bodies and the things that he would do while he was there. He was definitely degrading, which is also obvious in when he escaped and went to Florida and what he did in the sorority house just really shows that he was, he was rapidly degrading. But you have people like the BTK killer that made it like decades. And again, a lot of this has to do with, um, I don't want to say law enforcement incompetence, but the lack of sharing information between uh, law enforcement agencies and the lack of the, that centralized database and the lack of technology that makes it really easy right now to be like, okay, we've got somebody who committed this crime like this. And it's like, oh, look, somebody like three states away has something like super similar. It's not out of the question that that person might've traveled here. You know, you have that, that information more readily available. But anyways, because this movie is largely based on her book, a lot of it has to do with how she sees him and her perception of the situation and her wanting to believe the best out of him. Now, um, this isn't really a spoiler, but I just honestly think this is good information to have there. This movie doesn't have anything to do with him committing the crimes. This largely has to do with the trial and everything that happens after his initial arrest in Utah. Now, this is kind of also where an issue pops up because they are using a lot of that kind of like questionability, like, did he do it? Is he actually the criminal? There's like a large section of the movie that if it wasn't about Ted Bundy, or if you had never heard of Ted Bundy, you might actually be like, is this dude innocent? Like, did he actually not do that, but it's all in service of the greater plot and for a reveal that they do later on. But I understand that complaint because even if it's largely supposed to be her uh, perception of the situation, a lot of it's obviously happening from, you know, Bundy's perspective and he maintained to the end that he, to, that he was innocent, that he hadn't actually committed any crime. So obviously that is what's being translated to the audience. However, I don't think that it glorified him as a person. I think that it pointed out a lot of like the BS that he believed and how he was peddling it, especially once you get to the end. Basically, I just think that a lot of people are complaining about this wrongfully when they haven't, they haven't even seen the movie. Like you have to take the entire movie from start to finish. If something's happening earlier on in the movie that's amping up the fact that there's like this whole spectacle of his trial and the rock star nature. That's because it's an accurate portrayal of what actually happened. He had a televised trial. Obviously it was gonna cause this kind of like rock star behavior. People cheered. People were lining up outside the prison cheering when he was getting executed. Like this whole thing was a spectacle and, and this kind of really just tried to exemplify a lot of that. And again, it's supposed to paint him as, you can't just paint him out the gate as this like absolutely disgusting psychotic killer that he was when you know he maintained a life where he had a long-term girlfriend, where he was helping raise a child, you have to have that. So for every account of somebody being like, you know what, he did kind of get maybe a little handsy and violent with me, that wasn't her reality of the situation and that's what we get. So that is my opinion on the matter. So yeah, I guess for the people just kind of peddling a lot of this drama, it, like I said, if it's on the side that you're just like, why do we continue to hold some of these people up when they've literally just committed heinous crimes. Why do we keep talking about them? Doesn't that go in the face against everything? Like, it, it's kind of hard because I think it is important to do the research on these types of people and try to figure out, you know, why they necessarily do what they do. Are there warning signs? Can you catch things before it escalates to these situations? Is it a lost cause? Like, are these people just like outliers that'll never be able to change? I understand why people find it interesting because I find it interesting and it's, it's a large section of a reason why I got the degrees that I ended up getting. But either way, the large part here is that I don't want anybody going into this movie thinking that this is him just very charmingly maintaining this double life throughout the movie. Like I said, the movie picks up from the trials and what I thought the movie was gonna be was basically 
a little like montage earlier on in the movie and then it like I said it picks up from when he gets arrested and then you get into the entire spectacle of his trials and everything that happens there. It just really does present the information that the world had at the time. Uh, I think the movie could have been done a lot better, but that's not really what the debate here is. I'm just saying that it's not like this is an entire movie where you're gonna walk out being like, damn, they did my man Ted dirty. You're not, you're not. You're gonna walk away being like, holy shit, this dude was a monster. But anyways, that is gonna do it for today's video. Like I said, this was supposed to be a topic dump, but I think I rambled on about this one subject long enough. It's been a while since I made videos. I don't, how do, how do you do this, guys? How do you do this? But yeah, if you happen to be at Sundance and saw this movie, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. Uh, there will be a full review of this video closer to the time that it releases, though if you do want me to talk about it ahead of time, feel free to do so. I am planning kind of, uh, of talking about how this movie shaped in comparison to that Netflix docuseries that came out by the same director, and I'm gonna go ahead and read uh, Elizabeth uh, Klepfer, uh, which is written under the name Elizabeth Kendall, which I think is the pseudonym, and then I think Klepfer is her real last name uh, that they that they use in the docu series, and I believe in the movie as well. But uh, either way, it is her story. So for a lot of people being like, this is just random directors trying to cash in on victim stories, it is largely her story. Most of what's happening here is is largely shaped by her her perception of him. And the entire situation so she's just she's just making making her bank out of this situation which you know years of stress she endured trying to level with the fact that she was so intimate with somebody who could commit such terrible crimes which and it largely makes her a victim too obviously uh, i can understand why victim families would be really upset by by a lot of this because it does just drudge up uh, a lot of things from the past, but um, it's kind of a tough situation all around. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm planning on kind of doing something like that where you know I read that book and I've watched the Netflix uh, documentary series uh, on my flights. So I'm kind of trying to do something where I compare uh, a few of them, but then I'll do an actual review for the movie. Let me know if you guys want that review now or if you'd like it closer to the actual release of the film. That's up to you guys. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments section down below. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll catch you all later.